Welcome to Electron Line. So far we've seen that in rectangular coordinate systems our volume element is simply dx, dy, dz because it's a rectangular box. In cylindrical coordinates it was a little bit more complicated. We had these rounded sides here because it was along the edge of the cylinder or at least had the shape of the edge of the cylinder. So we had a volume element that had the height dz the distance here dr because we use the radius of the cylinder and the additional extent of the radius here in this distance dr and then the curved side here would be the same as the what we call arc length of a circle it would be the distance from there to there which is r times the change in the angle d theta so our volume element was r dr d theta dz so r d theta for this side we had dz for that height and dr for this length right here but what about spherical coordinates? Well, it's even a little bit more complicated. Again, it's actually quite hard to draw, but assume that we have a spherical dv, and what does that dv equal? And that's always difficult to figure out. Well, first of all, the distance to the volume element, we're going to call that rho. Instead of using r, we call it rho. It's the distance from the center of the circle out to wherever your volume element is. So this distance here is rho. And we can then see that the angle relative sum to a reference, we call that the x-axis reference, we call that the angle theta, which goes all the way around 360 degrees this way. And then we have the reference from the z-axis, we call that angle phi, so it drops down to here. That angle here is phi, and this angle here is theta. So when we go from there to there, this angle here is a small change in theta, and then here this would be a small change in phi. So it turns out if this distance here is phi, then this distance here would be a small change in phi, so we call that d phi. And this distance here, that would be phi times, that's kind of like the same like with a cylinder, it's an arc length of a circle, so we call that phi times, or I should say, yeah, uh, rho times d phi. So we call this rho times d phi, which is the distance here. So now we have this distance, we have this distance. Now what about this distance here? Now that's the tricky one because that distance narrows as the volume element gets close to the top and becomes zero width at the very top. And when it's here at the halfway point, then it's the widest. At that point, it would be equal, that would equal the distance rho times the angle d theta. So normally you would have this distance as being rho times d theta, or actually it's probably better if I point to this distance right there. But then you also notice that it gets smaller as you go to the top. It will come zero at the top and it gets its maximum width at the central point and then again it becomes zero at the bottom. So how do you account for that? Well, it depends on the angle phi and when the angle is zero degrees, you get zero when it's 90 degrees you get the maximum value so that means we need the sine of phi added to that so we need to then multiply this times the sine of phi to adjust for the difference in the width as we take a volume ele element going to the very top or going to the very bottom when the angle becomes zero degrees sine of zero zero the width goes to zero and so now we have the proper portions here to make up a volume element in spherical coordinates so we have dv is equal to, well, we have rho times d phi for this, times d rho times rho d theta sine of phi. And then typically we rearrange those in the proper order. We can then say that dv is equal to rho times rho, which is rho squared, times d rho times sine, uh, let's see here, d theta times the sine of phi d phi. And so that would be one way in which we can order the, the elements. And then typically we take this and we rearrange them so that it's a more practical order. So we write the volume element in spherical coordinates. We first collect the rows here. So we have rho squared. We collect the sine of phi and now we have the d rho d phi d theta. So we go d rho, d phi, and d theta at the end. And so that's how we express our volume element in spherical coordinates. So again, 
The way we get those is we get a d phi here from a change in the radius or radial radius from the center of the circle. Then we have this distance here, which is like an arc length of a circle, which is rho times d phi, which is straightforward. But then here, this width here, normally if you put it at the xy plane, it would be equal to rho times d theta, because you have rho times the change in the angle, but the slice becomes thinner at the top and thinner at the bottom, so we have to throw in a sine of phi in there to adjust for that changing width. And so that's how we end up with our volume element. And now once we have the volume element, we can now show you some examples of how to utilize that when we have shapes that are more like circ circles rather than rectangles or cylinders. And so that's how that works.